Welcome to another video of Team Adam's Teaching. I'm going to start out my division rules of exponents with a little cheat sheet here that can help you remember the rules for exponents um, because they're very different than the rules for regular numbers. And so here's what I like to think of. For every, each one of these operations, there's an opposite. So we have opposite of adding, subtracting, opposite of multiplying, dividing, opposite of taking something to an exponent is taking its root. And when it comes to exponents, they always follow the rule of one level less than what you think or what it says it should be. So normally, if you have repeated addition, you get multiplication. If you have repeated multiplication, you get exponents. And that's where that comes from. But when it asks you to multiply bases with exponents, they actually want you to add your exponents together. And if they're asking you to take a base with an exponent and take it to a higher power, they actually want you to multiply those exponents together. And those you would have seen done in the multiplication rules of exponents. Same thing is going to happen as we move to division. When it asks you to divide bases with exponents, the exponents actually get subtracted. And as you can guess, we're not going to get to this this year, but when it asks you to take the root of a base with an exponent, they'll actually be dividing the exponents. But other things to keep in mind here. When problems ask you to multiply numbers, you multiply them. Number rules have not changed. The number rules you've always known are still the same. So when it comes to numbers, do what you've always done. But when it asks you to multiply like bases with exponents, the exponents are the one that use one level less than what it's actually asking. So again, if they're asking you to multiply them, then you're going to add the exponents. So what is a problem asking to do, asking you to do, and what should you do with the exponents? We'll take a look at a few examples before we move on. And um, what is the problem asking you to do? We have x to the third power times x to the fifth power. Notice they just said times. They want me to multiply these two things together, which means that I'm going to do one less than multiplying, adding. So this is really going to be x to the eighth power. I'm going to add the 3 plus 5 together to get my answer. This one is x to the third power to the fifth power, or x cubed times, or to the fifth power. And in that case, again, we're taking a power to a higher power. That's exponents. So we do one less than exponents, which is multiplying. Again, I like to think of it as the distributive property for exponents. And we're going to multiply x times 3 times 5. And that's going to give us an exponent of 15. So x to the 15th power on this one. Um, and hopefully you can see the difference between these two and why we added on one and multiplied on the other. Um, this one's a kind of multi-stepper again. We have to follow order of operations. Notice we're multiplying this with this, but we're also taking this section to the fifth power. And again, we always want to do exponents before we multiply when it comes to order of operations. So I'm going to rewrite this first part, m to the fourth power, y to the third power. And then when it comes to taking this part to the fifth power, I'm going to multiply the exponents together. Notice that the y has no exponent there, which means it's a 1. So I'm going to end up with m to the tenth power, because 2 times 5 is 10, and y to the fifth power, because 1 times 5 is 5. Now we've done the exponent part. Now we're going to go back and multiply the two together. When you are multiplying bases with exponents, you actually add the exponents. Brings us back to one of these. So our final answer here, m to the 4 plus 10, 14. y to the 3 plus 5 is 8. And then that becomes our answer. And we could also write it out in expanded form, and you'd see that you'd end up with this part as well. Um, other things that you need to remember with this, your final answer is going to always be all positive exponents. you see that coming up. Um, all numbers need to be simplified to a single number. So if it's 2 to the third power, you don't leave it as 2 to the third power. You multiply 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, and write that as its simplified answer. With variables and exponents, you can't do that. So you just leave them as variables and exponents. And then all your variables are only written once in the answer. You can't have an answer like 
m to the sixth power y to the eighth power m to the eighth power notice this six and this eight here these bases can only show up once in the final answer so you actually have to put these together and make it a 14. you can't have multiple variables in the same answer they all need to be put together so i'm going to show you one last little piece of today and then we will look at it later um, in part two so kind of a weird thing there's something called zero exponents and here's what happens with them if you'll notice three to the third power is three times three times three 27 three squared is three times three or nine three to the first power is three what is three to the zero power well we can look and see patterns as we move up we multiply by three each time three times three is nine nine times three is 27. If you look in the other direction, we're dividing by three each time. So 27 divided by three is nine. Nine divided by three is three. And then three divided by three gives us the answer to x, or sorry, <laughs> three to the zero power, which is going to be one. And the rule is anything to the zero power is one. So now we get to some negative exponent rules. And if you think about it, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna divide by three again. And if I take one and divide it by three, I get one third. And then we keep going and we divide that by three and we get one ninth. And if we did that again, we get divided by three, one twenty seventh. So notice that anything to the zero power is always gonna be one, no matter what. And then when you have negative exponents, its answer is actually the reciprocal of the number, the base that you have there. So another quick example here, five squared is five times five, 25. Five to the first power is just five. Five to the zero power, one. Five to the negative first power is one fifth. And five to the negative second power is one twenty-fifth. And so that leaves us with this rule here, zero exponents, a to the zero power, any base to the power of zero is one. All right, I'll see you guys next time for division rules of exponents. See you later. <laughs>